What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. First of all, I want to say thank you. You guys got me to 3,100 subscribers and it didn't take long. So I was really impressed by that. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and so I did do the drawing for the Vintage Collection Lando Calrissian along with a sliding acrylic case from Case Shells. Tom Hogan sells some acrylic cases that I've talked about in a recent video. His contact information is in the video description. And I want to say congratulations to Michael McCloskey. He was the winner of the Lando and acrylic case, so thank you. Let's go ahead and do another one. I'm going to go ahead and give away. This time I want to give away a case shell sliding acrylic case that fits the, the three packs, the special action figure three packs that are like from Target and things like that. Um, for the vintage collection, I, I've, I heard from a number of subscribers when I gave away the case shell sliding case, the first one, that uh, they need some of those. So we're going to go ahead and give one of those away next. All you got to do is get me to 3,200 subscribers. So we're about, I'd say about uh, 80 or so away from that. So tell your friends about my channel. Uh, be sure to like the video. And um, whenever we get close to 3,200, I'll do the drawing on that one. And so make sure to comment below in this video. Make sure to like it and make sure to be a subscriber. And I'll uh, do a drawing once we hit 3,200 subscribers for a special action figure three-pack acrylic sledding case from K-Shell. So thanks again to Tom for providing the giveaway. Um, all right, so let's dig into some awesome vintage vintage. Uh, Kenner items that uh, I found. I, I, I span the gamut. We've got everything from 12 inch figures to die cast to mint on card to loose graded figures. I, I really tried to, to do all kinds of different budgets. So you guys, uh, depending on what you guys are looking for right now, hopefully I nailed something uh, in terms of a price point that works for you. And I mean, everything from $90 to, to several thousands of dollars. There was one even uh, one incredible item that sold for over $5,000 that I'm going to talk about towards the end of the video that I don't think the seller knew what it was. Uh, otherwise, he might have he might have priced it a little higher because I think it went for a very fair deal. So make sure to stick around uh, for that. But let's go ahead and dig right in. We've got a graded 1979 12-inch Darth Vader. I, I really love this. This is one I'd like to have in my collection one day. I don't, you know, I, I don't really have any 12 inch figures but i think if i'm going to get one i probably need to get one of these 12 inch faders and this one sold at auction it was graded by collector archive services 80 80 85 so very high grade and it looked to be in high grade it's really really nice condition there um he looks awfully nice with that i, I love the way that that lightsaber is kind of portrayed there where it's kind of in mid-swing i don't know what they're doing there but it looks pretty cool um, and it's probably about right for the grade i mean it looks it looks nice like a nice mint and seal box example um, but that's a beautiful, beautiful item. That one sold for $930 plus shipping. I thought that was a great deal. Great deal to me for, for a beautiful high-grade 12-inch Vader. Uh, here was an ungraded 20-back B Stormtrooper. It looked to be in really, really nice condition overall, though. Hard to tell sometimes. You know, some, sometimes these sellers don't use super high, high-def uh, photos and, you know, a lot of the details not captured. But, um, but it looked really nice. It had one little ding there in the upper left-hand corner on the blister, as you can see. But what a beautiful 20-back Stormtrooper um, overall. I, I don't know what this thing would grade at. I mean, I'm assuming it's legit. It looked legit, but those colors are pretty vibrant there. Um, yeah, I mean, that looks pretty real to me. I'm, you know, somebody correct me if you think if you don't think that's a legit, a legit uh, Kenner 20 bag, but it looks gorgeous. That one sold for $825 plus $10 shipping. I thought that was a pretty good deal. I'm guessing this thing would grade out at probably like a, I don't know, it might even hit 85 on the card. I don't know. It's hard to sell. It's hard, it's hard to tell without really detailed photos, but it did, it did have some sticker residue there, a little litho tear. Um, I think it would be an 80, eh, probably, probably an 80, 75, 80 or 85, somewhere in that ballpark. Probably an overall 80 would be my guess. Um, it's probably straight 80s, or it might have one or two subscores that are 75, but I think it would hit an 80 for the overall. But that was a nice item. 825 for 20 back B Stormtrooper. A couple of die casts, as I mentioned earlier. A couple of die casts did sell. This was an unpunched Slave 1. Had a, a, a pretty sizable ding here at the at the upper corner of the, uh, of the blister there. Very yellowed, obviously, but man, that was a very, very nice Slave 1. A little bit of card curl, but probably like a 75 plus overall in terms of condition at at, a, at, at worse. 
Um, yeah, it's probably a 70, maybe a 70. It had some pretty major damage to the stem on the blister there, as you can see. So probably a 70, unfortunately. But that's still sold for 609. And we've seen some AFA 80 uh, examples of this die cast slave one so far into the 2000 plus range. So I think 609 is probably about right for, for an overall 70. I think the card and the and the figure score or the, the vehicle score would probably be in the 80s, but um, uh, that, that blister score would have brought it down to probably in the 70s is my guess. Uh, here was a, a really nice cloud car, twin pod cloud car, as you can see there. Uh, very, very nice condition overall. I, I can't tell if the blister is clear or if it's got slight yellowing. It looks clear to me in there, but Probably like a 75 grade. Came with a star case. Very nice item, though. Uh, that one sold for $430 plus shipping. That was a buy it now situation. I thought that was a pretty good deal there. This is another one I was watching. Uh, Chris W. over at Rogue 5 Toys sent me that one because he knows I like Death Star droids. But um, I decided to pass on it. But it, it did sell very quickly. It sold for $425. It had a pretty decent sized ding on the blister if you're being super picky. Let's see if I can find that photo here. Um... Right there. Yeah, so you can see there it had a pretty sizable blister, blister ding, if not a crack, uh, in the upper right-hand corner of that blister. So I think that would have probably dropped it to a 75 overall at best for the, the score. But a very nice 41A back survival kit offer, Death Star droid, clear blister. That Again, that one sold for 425 I think that's right in line with market for an unpunched kind of 75-ish grade. Um, here was one that was graded. This was a 41 back survival kit Imperial Commander, graded 80 plus by CAS. 80, 85, 85 were the were the scores. I mean, I thought that was a pretty good deal. 4.99, 99 was the was the final sales price. That one had free shipping. I think for an 80 plus 41 back IC, that's a that's a pretty good number in my opinion. Um, but it looked it looked beautiful. It was it was punched and it did have some sticker residue on the on the card in the upper right hand corner, but probably fairly graded and uh the price clearly was was fair since it did sell uh this was a beautiful 45 back power droid uh this had the star wars display arena gorgeous example here of the power droid it was punched but the sub scores on it were right here this was archival case just graded uh the card got an 80 blister 85 figure 85 and that is a beauty and that one sold for 1247 i thought that was a really high price but I don't know. Power Droid seems to be on the way up. I don't. I don't know what the deal is, uh, but Power Droid and R five D fours are definitely on the way up in terms of price point. And uh, this one sold uh, on January 29th with twenty seven bids. But uh, that was a beautiful example, and the price certainly reflected that. I thought this was a good deal. This is when I was looking at too. This was a forty seven back four lime offer. Cloud Car Pilot. Um, I've already got this one in my collection, but I was curious to see if this one would sell. It's, you know, the card had a little bit of damage there around the hang tab, but it was unpunched and it had this price sticker there. Beautiful clear blister, but I thought that was a really nice example. Probably an 80 overall. It probably hit 80. Uh, 80, 85, 80 would be the, the scores, I think, for it. Uh, that one sold for 283. 283. I thought that was a good price. Really good price for a, uh, a ESB cloud car pilot. You know, maybe I'm a little generous on it. Maybe it only gets a 75 plus, but whatever the whatever the, the final score would be in grading, I think for uh, an ESB card back, clear blister, unpunched, for 283 US dollars plus another 27 shipping, let's call it a little over 300 bucks. That's a great deal in my opinion. I think that was worth every penny of that. Uh, this one sold at auction. This was a 48 back Revenge of the Jedi AT-AT driver. Now the issue with this one is, you know, Whoever owned it prior put hole punches in the card, and that's just painful to look at. So you can see where they used a hole punch to around the hang tab there, and you know probably hung it up on a wall or something like that. But that really dings this. You know, if you're, if you're going to get to something like this graded, I think the max score it would get would be a 70 because of that. Because it, you know, technically it's got part of the card missing from where they did the hole punch. So that was painful to look at, but it was otherwise beautiful. I mean, it had beautiful blister. Uh, the figure obviously was in great shape, but I'm pretty sure that, that, that the grading companies would ding that all the way down to a 70 overall uh, because of those hole punches. But I've never tried to submit something with, with that in there, but um, that would be my guess. But it was gorgeous. And that one sold for $375 plus $15 shipping on five bids, so it didn't stop the bidding. Uh, here was another one that was really nice, another 48 bag. This is FX7. It was punched. Had a little bit of wear around the hang tab, but... Uh, Clear blister, really pretty. 
that blue really pops on on, the, on this FX7. Gorgeous example of that. Probably an overall 80, I, I guess. That's just my my rough guess on the condition. But uh, that one sold for 248, 248 on four bids. I thought that was a great price for a uh, FX7, and uh, someone got a good deal on that one. Okay, now I've got uh, we're taking a little break here on the mint on card. Although you want to stick around because towards the end I've got some insane. Mint, I got one insane mint on card that was really amazing to look at, but. Let's talk about some loose graded figures. Now, this was a CAS graded Hong Kong Vader. So it's a CAS 90, Hong Kong. Now, it's not a direct apples to apples comparison, but this, this is a CAS 90, Hong Kong two line. That one sold for 227.50 on 35 bids. That one just closed on January 30th. Now, there was a no COO, probably in the, from the Palatoy factory, a no COO AFA 95. So I'm going to show you that next. I'll give you a second to decide what you think that one sold for. An AFA 95 at auction, which you would, which I don't, I don't think I've ever seen an AFA 95 loose gridded Vader at auction before. Uh, if if it if I had, I don't remember it. Okay, but it is a no COO, a no COO. So it's not a direct, you know, apples to apples comparison here. I would say that the no COO population. Of Vader's is probably lower than the Hong Kong's. So let's be honest here, but uh, but anyway, so that one sold for two twenty seven fifty. The 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 AFA ninety five, as you can see here, sold for one thousand two hundred and thirty seven dollars. Just a massive number, massive number. But that's that's a very very rare high score archival case AFA ninety five. I, I would bet that the population of those is probably less than ten. That would be my guess. I, I don't know for a fact on that, but. I would I would think there's very very few of those out there that are that are AFA 95. So it's a very difficult score to achieve. Um, it's got the brand new uh, brand new case style archival case. I mean that's gorgeous. Now there's also an AFA. The same seller had an AFA 95 Chewbacca, and that one is here. Uh, another no COO figure. So probably from the Palatoy factory or somewhere in in Europe. Uh, that one sold for one thousand twenty five dollars. So just incredible multiples that high-end collectors are willing to pay for these 95 grade figures it's just again this is the type of things you you would typically see at like hakes or you know something like that is you just don't see these types of items hit ebay and i would wager that if the if these two 95 grades were at hakes they would have commanded probably even higher prices i mean it's just very difficult to find those and you know clearly the market uh, for, for those very high grade figures uh, commands massive massive multiples over 90 grades uh, here was a lower grade red bar R5. I think this one sold once, and then the, either the buyer didn't pay or something, and then they relisted it. So this was the relisted auction. That one sold for $885, and I'm going on memory here, folks, but I think the first time this sold, it sold for less. It was like a, it was a lower, lower 800 range, or it might have been like 780 even. But $885 for an AFA 70 red bar R5. So those have really taken off in price. So even a low grade 70 sold for $885 on the second. That's the second go around too. Um, now let's go back to the lower end of the budget. I mean, here was a really nice one that I was looking at. I didn't buy it just because I didn't feel like spending, but this was a no COO TIE Fighter Pallet UKG 85, brand new case style. This is kind of the last major variant I need for my TIE Fighter Pilot run. I've got a, you know, a PBP, I've got the Lily Letty, I've got, you know, a Hong Kong, but I don't have the no COO yet, so I'd like to get that one at some point. But that this was a beautiful example, and uh, that one sold for ninety bucks, ninety bucks plus shipping. So for me, it would have been because of the global shipping program cost. It would have been almost double. It, it, the, the, just the shipping would have been almost as much as the item because the, the shipping is, is seventy dollars to the U.S. for me. So it's just crazy how difficult it is to get uh, a fair deal on. Uh, on on international items for U.S. buyers right now on eBay. It's just it's cost prohibitive because of the global shipping program. Uh, another interesting one was this one. This was a 90 plus CAS grade Lily Letty Neonum. That one sold for 218 on free shipping, 30 bids. I thought that was a great price for a very high grade Neonum. Uh, this probably came off like a U.S. market, you know, Lily Letty U.S. market card back. Um, and uh, 90 plus is, is gorgeous. Really, really nice. Um, Elton John's love child over in the UK also had this one. This was a burgundy cape Lily Letty squid head. I thought this final sales price wasn't too bad. You know, so it's got that red, very distinctive burgundy cape for the squid head, the Mexican squid head. 
Uh, very distinctive color to that cape. I've, this one in my collection. Uh, this one sold for 461 pounds or 618 US dollars. Um, I thought that price was pretty fair given what I paid for my CAS 85 plus. I thought that was a, a, a great price. Um, I paid, I don't remember exactly what I paid, but it was, it was in that ballpark. It was a little bit more expensive than this one, but, uh, uh, that was a pretty harsh grade. I mean, it looked, it looked to be in better, better condition than an 80%, but, uh, you can see there the figure got 80, 85 for the paint and the cape got 80. So I would argue that mine is probably about similar condition. Um, but anyway, that one sold for 618. I thought that was a great price. Um, here's another Yak Face. Last 17s continue to go up in price. I mean, every time I think I see a Yak Face selling for a high price, we have another one that sets another bar. And this was only an 80 plus only. I mean, it's still a beautiful item. But typically, this kind of price point has been like 85. <laughs> but the last 85 Yak Face loose graded sold for $1,300, believe it or not. So this was an 80 plus, and that one sold for $900. So... Given where that AFA 85 sold just a few weeks ago for $1,300, I think that this $900 mark is kind of right in line with market for an 80 plus. So um, they just continue to go up in price no matter what. Um, all right, now this is a really interesting one. And I know that several uh, subscribers to the channel sent me this by PMs, and I, I got this from like 10 different people. But rest assured, I was watching this. And I, and I want to say thank you guys for doing that. I mean, I, I'm... I don't want you to think I'm not appreciative of you guys sending out links to me by Instagram or whatever. I, I appreciate you guys doing that because sometimes I do miss stuff. I'm, I'm not all-knowing, all right? I don't see everything that pops up, but this one was definitely worth talking about. Now, this seller in uh, in Australia listed as Star Wars Vintage Collection Retro Yoda by Kenner. That is not what this is. This is not the retro collection, okay? <laughs> this is a vintage Kenner Yoda on the free Neon Num offer, but what's unique about this one is that this is the Toll Toys example. So this was manufactured in the Toll Toys factory uh, in Australia, and you know, so these were only made for the Australia and New Zealand markets. As you can see there, it's got the the New Zealand, uh, or excuse me, the the whatever the Australian address, Alexandria. So th these items are extremely, extremely difficult to find. And the fact that he listed it as a retro Yoda, I just thought that was hilarious. But it didn't affect the price, clearly. It sold for 7490 Australian dollars, which is 5277 U.S. dollars. I don't know what the market values are for, for these. I just, I don't follow Toll Toys items. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that market very well, simply because they're so expensive. I mean, they're just such in, insanely expensive items to find mint on card. But I know that there are collectors out there. I've seen them on... Um, on Instagram, guys that focus on Toll Toys uh, items, but but they are very very expensive. Even even something like that's fairly common, like a General Maydeen or a Lando Skiff. Those are two of the most common Toll Toys mint on cards that you find. Even those in low grade can go for a thousand dollars plus. So to get a Yoda, a Yoda uh, on a Toll Toys card back, I knew that was going to go for big money. I, I can imagine. I probably know who the buyer was for this one, but. Uh, who's got a, an incredible Yoda collection. But uh, this one was gorgeous, uh, but it was just mislabeled by the seller. But uh, again, I, I don't know what, I, I don't know the market for, 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 for Toll Toys. I just wanted to point it out and how hilarious it was that he called it Retro Collection. But uh, anyway, 5277 US dollars took that one home for the Toll Toys Australian New Zealand market Yoda with the free Neon Gnome offer. Just an incredible item to see at auction. Uh, one other cool one that sold at auction was this one. This was a 65 back A Han Solo clear blister AFA 80. The card got an 80, blister 85, figure 80. Gorgeous, gorgeous card. Gorgeous item there. Um, looks like it either had some scratches on the case or something, but whatever. I mean, I, I would have gladly paid this number. This sold for $1,025, 33 bids plus $15 shipping. I would have paid that all day long if I had been looking for a Han uh, clear blister Return of the Jedi. That's just something that, you know, it's kind of a nice thing to have in your collection. You can see how scratched up that case was. So this would be one that if I bought that, I would definitely get it recased. As painful as it would be to send that off for for grading again uh, and, and be waiting for, uh, for, for it to come back a year and a half from now, probably with AFA. But you can also see it's got a crack there on the, on the case in the lower left-hand corner there. So this case was really, really beat up. And that's probably what kept the, kept the price down. 
Um, if it had been a super clean case, like freshly graded, I bet it would be closer to $1,500 would be my guess. But what do I know? Um, finally, uh, this is another cool one that you don't see come up very often. This one sold at auction. I thought that was a great price. Now, it's listed as a 77A back Emperor Palpatine yellow blister. And you're like, what's the big deal about that one, John? This is a very common item. Well, number one, emperors in general, yellow blister or not, they, they tend to be going up in value. They're, they're definitely moving up. And that's been happening for the last year and a half or so pretty pretty consistently. But this was a nice unpunched, you know, probably 70 grade overall. But what's unique about this one is that it had the void stamp on the proof of purchase. And, you know, as, as you guys know, those, those boxed mail-away emperors, those were often sent off by Kenner. You know, if you, if you collected and sent in enough proofs of purchases for the Return of the Jedi line of figures, you could get the mail-away emperor. I've got a number of those on my channel that I have. I've got a, uh, I've got a baggie uh, graded, and then I've also got the actual mailer box with the paperwork and all that graded by AFA. But what happened was, I think, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, Kenner probably ran out of those baggies. So they actually did go ahead and send off two people that sent in these proofs of purchase for the mail-away emperor. They just sent them in on card. They just sent those guys a minute on card. And so that's why they voided the proofs of purchase because, you know, it's it's this is a giveaway or a mail away uh, as part of the proof of purchase, you know, redeem, redemption. So they wanted to void that. So you did resend it in. Um, but that's kind of cool. I mean, I've seen I've seen a few of those sell on deal or no deal on Facebook. But this is the first time I've seen one to my memory on on eBay sell. And it was, you know, th these often were probably sent in mailer bags. So they're pretty beat up usually. And this one's no exception. You can see right here where it's got a ding on the on the blister. But given that this was probably not sent in a box, it was probably sent in a in some kind of mailer bag. Uh, that's that's in pretty good shape overall. It's still unpunched, and uh, uh, but it's cool to see that void on the on the proof of purchase. And and to answer your un, unasked question, I don't know how the graders would 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 grade this because it's got that void stamp on there. I assume that they would they would still grade it. And it would just, you know, be affected in terms of the card score. Or they might even label this as, you know, Kenner mail away, uh, redemption voided, something like that. I don't know. I don't, I've never seen one of these graded before. But uh, very cool item. And I thought 230 bucks plus $10 shipping was very fair for, for that item. Uh, anyway, just as a reminder, once we hit 3,200 subscribers, I will do a giveaway for a sliding case for those action figure, special action figure sets the three pack vintage collection they're like from target things like that or the stc sets like the 501st or the dr afro three pack things like that uh, they're really nice cases courtesy of case shells and so once i hit 3200 subscribers i will do a giveaway and so make sure to like this video be a subscriber and comment below to be automatically entered to win thanks so much and i'll be back soon